Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Tanks World Podcast. And today, I and Protomet will be discussing Hatchet 2. I can't wait to hear his opinion on that. Yeah. Not not your opinion, Protomet's opinion. He, he's the one that matters. Well, <laughs> he, he does matter to a point. <laughs> <laughs> Proto Met is here today, folks. <laughs> I'm bringing all my regular brand of humor. And plus, he owes me money. Not really. So, how much do I owe na- up at this point? How, mu- how much do I still owe? That penny. God damn it, I'll never, I'll never be <laughs> able to get out of debt. <laughs> well, if you stop ordering things, <laughs> that might be a slight help. Anywho. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, so Hatchet 2. We discussed Hatchet 1, or just Hatchet. Um, that one, one was a pretty much just a flashback, not flashback, but a, a slasher movie that reveled in the tropes. Yep. And Hatchet 2 isn't. <laughs> it is not. It is a schlocky horror film. Yeah. Slasher film. Slasher. No. The horror horror slasher. slasher. Same <laughs> difference. <laughs> I mean, this horror is the broader term for the genre, and mm-hmm. slasher is a subgenre, so you're technically correct in both instances. Well, I'm correct for once? Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just making fun of each other now. Okay, so... Mary Survival Girl. We'll still call her Survival Girl. <laughs> Who is now played by a completely new actress. Yeah. Jamie Lloyd. <laughs> Who uh, previously had played uh, Jamie from uh, the Halloween movies. The little girl. <laughs> She's like, oh, I can't. The, open, the, the opening scene in the movie after she manages to escape and she's walking down the street. I was like, why, does, why do I recognize this kid? Why do I recognize this person? Who who do I recognize this from? It's like. I made the comment <laughs> it's the same girl from the first movie. And that wasn't the case. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I was wrong. <laughs> like, on, on the surface, I, I would have agreed with you. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. But I feel I recognize her from something else. <laughs> um, a bit more superior movie than this one? Are, the, are we talking about the previous Hatchet or the two Halloween movies she's in? Because that is a slippery slope there, Brian. (laughs) I take back my statement. (laughs) I just remembered which one she's in. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah. This, okay, this movie isn't terrible. It could be better. Yeah, the first movie was way better most mm. mostly because it was tongue in cheek and rebelled in the in the slasher tropes and this one is dull yeah so pretty much uh, survival girl ends up getting picked up by a guy in a boat and he takes her to his shack i mean he takes her to his shack and they she pretty much tells her who she is, and apparently her dad did some bad things, and he doesn't want her. He basically kicks her out immediately. He's like, I didn't know who she was. Please don't hurt me. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Victor Crowley is still being played by Kane Hodder. One of only three actors to uh, return from the previous movie. Mm-hmm. Um, The second is... Uh, Tony Todd playing, I don't know, voodoo something. Reverend uh, Zombie. Re- huh? Yeah. <laughs> the same character he was in the previous movie. And that, he, he's that's, gonna... who he, that's who Mary Beth heads to mm-hmm. immediately after. <laughs> <laughs> so Mary Beth talks to Reverend Zombie and 
pretty much tries to explain some situations. He explains Crowley's backstory, like the whole deal. <laughs> like, apparently, Victor's uh, dad was a bit uh, doing... He, he had a sick wife, and while she was in the midst of dying, he had an affair with her caretaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and apparently they thought she died, and then she wasn't dead, then she died. And so the dying wife cursed the... <laughs> the caretaker. <laughs> or the mistress caretaker. And in doing so, cursed Victor, who was in womb. Mm -hmm. In utero. <laughs> Pretty much gets how he looks. <laughs> um, tumors everywhere, and uh, yeah. So he, his mom dies while giving birth. So then, dad takes care of him all his life. We we kind of see some scenes from the previous movie, but it makes more sense while being explained in this movie. And, you know, the Victor's uh, house got set on fire, and then his dad tried to break him free, and then they accidentally chopped him in the face with a hatchet. And unfortunately, the kids that burned down the place hid behind their parents, basically, and got off scot-free. Well, because they just thought uh, Mr. Crowley was a crazy man. <laughs> As that would kind of, kind of turn into... And then Mary, Mary Beth asks Reverend Zombie, how do you know so much about this? He's like, well, if I had been a braver kid, I would have been right there with them when mm -hmm. they did this. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much Reverend Zombie basically says he's a repeater. He He's still living in that moment of his death. Mm -hmm. And he won't... Uh, won't rest until that's all resolved. Reverend Zombie then tells Mary Beth to go home, kind of clean himself up, and get a hold of her uh, uncle, because apparently he was involved in something. <laughs> this situation. <laughs> Meanwhile, he gets in touch with a bunch of near local hunters. <laughs> But before that, uh, apparently the boat driver from the first movie has a twin brother. I think they just wanted to use the actor again. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my guess. <laughs> He's playing a, a different type character. Mm -hmm. Similar, but not quite the same. Um, I remember in the first movie, they stereotyped him like crazy. <laughs> like... He kind of, I don't want to do the accent because that'd make me feel more like, like when he finally snaps, he kind of goes into the right. Chinese talk. <laughs> or whatever nationality yeah. his character is supposed and to be. And this one, he speaks perfectly good English. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they get a whole bunch of hunters, bounty hunters, whatever. <laughs> Country folk. <laughs> And he offers them five hundred dollars under the under the initial pretext of helping to uh, get the swamp opened up because a he could if he if they do that he can open up his uh, touring tourist business again legally this time. Cause it turns out he's still been doing it, but it wasn't entirely legal. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. They ask who are the, who are they hunting, and he brings up Victor Crowley, and half the group leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's because they're terrified or they just think he's just a myth. It's like, I, <laughs> I think it's like half, probably half of them don't want to deal with that shit, and the other half don't want to deal with that fake bullshit, <laughs> yep. that wild goose chase. So simple enough. Okay, before even Zombie starts talking to them about the deal, um, I think the kid's name is Justin, or I don't remember. He goes, they uh, they come in and he offers them Chips Ahoy cookies. <laughs> and then we got some guy just keeps bringing up, he's like, so how, uh, is there only a one cookie? Like, 
thing. Can we get some milk for these cookies? This is the token black character of the movie who is not nearly as fun as the token black character from the previous movie. Yep. In the previous movie, you know, it, they played up the fact that it was a token black character. Yeah, because he wanted had a bit of well, fun besides with Tony Todd's slight scene. But I mean, like, a <laughs> token black recurring character. As token he black did actually, character. Ex- as he was the token black guy in uh, I mean, another I guess, movie. I mean, I guess considering <laughs> that Tony Todd is one of the major characters in this movie, this other guy isn't the token black character. <laughs> well, he's the one that's kind of talking... But if Tony Todd weren't in this movie, this character would definitely be the token <laughs> black character. And he um, is there. Yeah, he's there. and He's just part of the group. He's comic <coughs> relief, basically. Yep. Um, they, you know, certain people get, um, like, like I, we said, half the group leaves and people stay and they're like, we get this big burly guy that, uh, zombie actually kind of wants him to be there because I guess he's got a past that he, he was also one of them that burned, I guess another one that burned down <laughs> Yeah, so so basically it amounts to... Uh, He's collecting all the kids that burned down his guy's house. So... Accidentally. Ma- Mary, Mary Beth's uh, uh, Uncle, dad, dad yeah. is was the first one to be off in the, in the previous movie. Mm-hmm. So that just leaves the two other kids, Vernon and... Big Burley guy. And Mary, <laughs> and Mary Beth's uncle. Yep. <laughs> Um, Who, Bob, Mary Beth's uncle, is uh, not <laughs> too pleased about any of this. He, he thinks that it's all just... Uh, Bullpock. <laughs> <laughs> and this is despite the fact that she ha- she has told him that, no, I... I, I seen him. <laughs> I, I saw all this. This, this really happened. <laughs> I experienced this. I'm not... <laughs> uh, so... But what uh, Reverend Zombie doesn't reveal to Mary Beth <laughs> is that they're not really there to look for their her uh, dad and brother's body. They're trying to get his boat back. No, he figures the boat is a water. I mean, the yeah, boat he, is waterbound, so it's <laughs> pretty fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he, his he he intimates to his associate the the twin brother that uh, mm-hmm. he's actually there to get rid of, to oh. help help Crowley get rid of the other two mm-hmm. uh, perpetrators of the burning. Mm-hmm. Um, so, a bunch of them, that, like, I guess it's like, the same night, they all, like a group of people go on one boat and another group of people go on to another boat. And there is, a, I guess, a former couple yeah, one is a guy who's on the verge of getting married to the new woman, and the other is his old flame who's trying to rekindle things. Yep. Yep. <sighs> and he goes, it's like, you know, I'm here for the $500 for going towards my wedding. You're that? My wedding. I'm getting married. <laughs> he goes, and the girl's like, it's $500. Why the hell wouldn't I go go for it? <laughs> And plus, they, she just keeps teasing him that he was she was better at him, at things than he was. <laughs> like you get, you can tell these characters used to be an item, mm-hmm. but it's they're friendly towards each other. More not like some relationships how end badly. <laughs> I don't know if it ended badly or not because it never really goes that far. I. Don't even care. (laughs) (laughs) So at some point, everybody just kind of pairs off. Yep. Like you think we Um, had a guy named Chet. Yep. Chet teaming uh, up with a guy named Otis. Yep. They they go off deciding it's like we're not gonna deal with any Victor Crowley. Let's go illegal, illegal crock hunting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um. Then the token black guy is. Teamed up with a guy that is, I guessing mute because he doesn't say a fucking word. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of mouths shut up. <laughs> uh, and then like, 
Mary Beth is with a zombie, her uncle, and like the other guys. <laughs> so Victor offs the two with crack hunters first. <laughs> yep. They're. It's just funny because they can't see because it's so dark. They can't really see, and then Chet gets pretty much tackled, and then freaking, instead of chopping, he is smashing his hatchet into his face. And like he, kill, he kills the guy with the hatchet, but not in the way you're expecting. He, he's like, he's hammering he's it. <laughs> he's practically using it like it were a plunger. Yeah, on pretty a much. <laughs> Uh, and the other guy, he just mutilates the guy's face by shoving it into a, a boat engine. Yep. Uh, <laughs> or the boat propeller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then the old couple, like, starts shaboinking. Because of course they do. we got to get some TNA in here. <laughs> yep, just like, all right, yep, nope, sex and nudity. They're gonna die. <laughs> All the guy gets decapitated while the lady is still in mid penetration. It's an awkward scene. <laughs> Thank God it doesn't go as long as it does. But then how she dies is she's trying to crawl away. Victor chops the hatchet right where the spot. right in her chest between her boobs and get it gets stuck. <laughs> So, of course, we get a few shots of the boob jiggle while he's trying to dislodge the hatchet, and it is way too awkward. Well, yes, she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, God. <sighs> yep, and then eventually I think he figures out, oh, I'd better just go upward. Then all of a sudden we get a big blood splat. It's it's the most one of the more disturbing scenes in this entire film. <laughs> Um, then, uh, the, uh, the token black guy and the mute guy, they get, they get chopped, both get chopped in the groin with a, a giant, ridic ridiculously long chainsaw. It's like, a, 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 the kind of chainsaw that is so long that it strains credulity. <laughs> Yeah. Strange credibility. It's like, are there chainsaws that long? Because that is ridiculous. No, I don't. I've seen some long chainsaws, but they're not that long. Like, there's larger. Like, I would expect this kind of long chainsaw to be in something like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. or something. Like, the later Texas Chainsaw mm -hmm. Massacre movies where they're playing things up and it's over the top. And this is. Like. It's, it's like. He picks them both up with the saw. They fall pretty quick because they're good, mutilated with it. Um, yeah, it's it's an unbelievable size. The thing is, I believe if they have a wood splitting machine where it cuts it and then splits the wood, I could see a thing being that large for that. But to pick one up and with the, that long of a yeah. Chain. Chain, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's... I mean, I could maybe understand for, like, particularly big trees. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it still seems like it's comically long. Yeah. Like, uh, They could have been making a joke. They could have been making a joke, but that would imply that there was any sense of humor in this movie. Uh, Which there doesn't really... <laughs> really isn't. No. Unfortunately, one of the one of the weak aspects of this movie is that whereas the previous movie played up the fact that it was a tropey slasher movie, this one is just a straight slasher sequel. Yep. It. I mean, I guess they're trying to infuse a bit of humor, but it feels like they're playing it too straight. Yeah. So now we get to. Uh... Victor Crawley gets to uh, the zombies group, pretty much. They find the the shed that Mary Beth had found her dad and brother in. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, they try bar- once once they realize that Crowley's out there. They try barricading themselves in the shed, and then realize, well, maybe there's another way out of the shed. Yeah. Which then I guess goes into the cabin. Um. There's like zombies. A uh, um, associate gets beat like he he. Gets alone with Mary Beth and winds up revealing what uh, Reverend Zombie is up to, mm-hmm. and that results in her heading back to try and warn her Uncle Bob, yeah. which then leads the twin brother to wind up getting offed by Victor with a sander. Yep, a gas-powered sander from the first movie. They had to make that because all most sanders have a. Uh, Cords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we completely forgot the fact, forgot to mention the first death in this movie right at the beginning, with the guy, with the guy who rescues Mary Beth from the, from the, from the swamp. Yeah. Oh, he finds Shapiro's uh, camera, and he's tur- a creep. <laughs> yeah, it turns out the guy's a super creep. <laughs> he's like. I don't know why they decided to include that, other than to have some TNA at the beginning of the movie, and it's... It's, it's not... It it's, wasn't even as interesting as uh, the first one, where it's they're in Mardi Gras, so you're gonna see tits in general. I was like, this movie, I mean, I guess is acknowledge, it acknowledges that it's technically still around Mardi Gras, because I guess we get a shot of the director having puked, <laughs> yep. puked his guts up. Not literally. <laughs> no, not literally, but... <laughs> but anyway, they, this guy, after he checks out the footage on the camera, he it's like, oh, here's a noise, and then Victor shows up, splits his belly, and uh, decapitates him with his own intestines. Whatever, he's super strong. So whatever. It is, I and I was like, <laughs> um, I mean, I know that's a ridiculously amazing kill. Yeah, it was an interesting But kill. it does strain credibility because, again, I'm no medical doctor, but I don't think intestines are strong enough to decapitate a person. <laughs> like, a Gar- like a Garrett wire or something. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so either. But, you know, you're not a medical doctor, I'm not a medical doctor, we don't even play one on TV. Nope. <laughs> That just that just reminded me of the fact that we had didn't mention that because that is easily that is easily the best kill in the whole movie. Yeah, that just unfortunately. A... Yeah, the guy, the guy was just trying to help, but he didn't know who it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Victor ends up offing Mary Beth's uncle. Well, for, first he deals with uh, Vernon. Oh yeah. <laughs> They, Vernon actually kind of holds his own. He tries to. It doesn't work very well and winds up getting table stomped. That that scene didn't make sense to me. But, you know, Victor is supernaturally... Yeah, so basically the burly guy is forced to bite a table and Victor basically uses the table to chop off the top part of the guy's face. Yep. Head. The guy who blinks, too. Oh shit, uh, the guy who gets his face chopped off earlier. He was such a nothing character that I completely forgot he was there. Yeah. Like, the only reason I even remember it is because I recognize the actor from, like, fucking Animorphs. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, Holy well, and I think the first. <laughs> I think from the Earth first X Men movie, too. I think he plays Iceman or Pyro or something. Yeah. <laughs> who knows? Oh, uh, yeah, he just gets his face cut off. Ch-ch- I can't even remember what happens to the guy he's with. I don't remember. I, d- I just don't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of kills on this movie. Yeah, but some of them are less well, memorable than the others. That was, that kill, I believe, was where his face got cut off was in a uh, when a zombie was telling the backstory. I mean, maybe I, I I thought it was one of the hunters, but I and <laughs> mm, it could have been. <laughs> I really <laughs> don't remember a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so zombie grabs Mary Beth and starts to try to drag him, drag, drag him, drag her out because uh, he he thinks if uh, he gets Victor gets revenge on the people like, who killed. The, so yeah, well, Victor's fighting uh, Vernon. <laughs> uh, Bob gets incapacitated and. Uh, Reverend Zombie locks the shed by closing the door and shooting at it or something. I, 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 I don't know how the fuck that works. I, I'm like, what? How, how the hell would that lock it? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but apparently it's locked enough that Bob is, uh, Bob isn't able to escape and he winds up getting killed practically off screen by Victor. Well, we, it's like the scene in Friday Part 6. Um, where uh, you don't really see the kill is when he, the he pretty much paints the room with mm. yeah that, because you just see blood just spl splat <laughs> and then with Bob dead Reverend Zombie is like okay now the curse is over and Victor has stopped you, you can hear that he has clearly stopped and then Mary Beth is like, you dumbass! That wasn't my actual uncle. My uncle died when I was seven years old. Of leukemia. Yeah. <laughs> my, that was my that was my dad's best friend. We just called him uncle. Yeah. And then Reverend Zom is like, oh shit. <laughs> um, and Victor Crowley bursts out of the shit. And then uh pretty much hatchets or not yeah, hatchets him in half. At the waist. <laughs> And as Zombie falls, Victor pretty much pulls out. It's like removes the skin. Like at <laughs> first, it looks like he's trying to remove the guy's spine, but he winds up uh, skinning the guy. <laughs> yep, and then just randomly chucking the remains, remains into some brush, and then Mary Beth comes with Victor's own hatchet and just starts. Fucking him up. And it basically turns his face to paste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the movie ends. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, um, yeah, there is a part three. Yeah, so. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah this, uh, <laughs> this wasn't that good of a movie. I would definitely take the first hatchet over this movie. Yeah. It, I don't hate this movie. I mean, it went by pretty quickly, but at yeah. the same time, not a whole lot really happened for a good chunk of the no. movie. So, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Favorite character? I mean, I gotta admit, Mary Beth did a good did a good <laughs> job surviving two whole movies. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after the experience you had in the previous movie, the fact that you was willing to go back and fuck Victor up. <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, you know, knowing that at the end of the previous movie, it basically implied that she died. Only for her to be... Nope, not the case. Mm -hmm. Just a new actress, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> Stoner guy did. Because Victor used his hand to... As bait. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, this movie is just kind of... I feel it takes itself too seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels more revenge-based. I mean, Tony Todd does a good job. Mm -hmm. So do some of the other actors, but... It just... Eh. Mm -hmm. if, if it had reveled a bit more in the tropes, I feel it would have been a good thing. But this kind of feels like... What was it, Halloween 4 when the posse shows up to try and deal with Michael Myers? Yeah. It's just like, okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you just made a lynch mob. Yeah, because you don't got a fucking police force. <laughs> <laughs> See how far good that went for them. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh... If I had a choice, I'd probably watch something else. Yeah. But if it was, like, on TV or something, I might give it a watch. But I, uh, I'd probably turn it turn to something yeah. interesting, personally. <laughs> but if I had an... If, 
if it was out of this or Hatchet. Hatchet. Yeah. <laughs> First movie was great. It was fun. This movie is dull. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, I my favorite character was probably Mary Beth. So what kill did you enjoy that you I mean I guess I guess I said it already. I I think the <laughs> The intestine decapitation was yeah. the most creative in the entire movie. Mm -hmm. The rest are just either comical, too comical, or just really ick. Yeah. And I don't like the good kind of ick. <laughs> no. No. Uh, mine would have to be... Mary Beth actually fucking up... Victor. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I mean, she absolutely dominates that fight. <laughs> He's like, it, it, she turned. She became Tommy Jarvis for yep. a second there. Die! 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I, I guess I don't really have too much more to say about this movie, but if you want to watch the Hatchet series, go right ahead. The, the first one is great. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's... Uh, you said there are like two other movies? Three and Victor Crowley. We'll get to those, I suppose. <laughs> in the, in the mid-future. We got another podcast coming up, but we'll... Hold off on the name of that, but... It is relevant for this one. Yeah. That's the only clue we'll give. Yep. <laughs> All right, till next time, folks. I'm Tank. I'm Protomet. See ya.